today we are going to start of a new topic which is chemical plaque control so now first let us know what are chemical plaque control agents chemical plaque control agents are basically those agents that could inhibit the development or maturation of suprajengival plaque based on the mechanism of action adi and moron developed or given classification basically called as anti adhesive anti microbials plaque removable and anti pathogenic as the name suggest anti adhesive means they prevent the adhesion of the bacteria anti microbial would be against microorganisms and plaque removable would be once the plaque is formed you need to remove the plaque and anti pathogenic would be against the bacteria which are there lan and newman modified it further as anti microbial subdividing it further into bactericidal or bacteriostatic agents plaque reducing or inhibitory that is they reduce the quantity or affect the quality may or may not uh, be sufficient to influence gingivitis the next one would be the anti plaque agents which affect on plaque sufficient enough to benefit gingivitis and anti gingivitis agents which would affect gingivitis without necessarily influencing the plaque which is there so now we need to know <clears throat> why exactly plaque control is required chemical plaque control would be essential though we have a whole lot of mechanical plaque control agents we have a whole lot of interdental aids which are there why exactly do we require chemical plaque control agents we very well know the relationship between suprabilgeal plaque and chronic gingival gingivitis which has been established so the primary or the secondary prevention or even prevention of recurrence of periodontitis once periodontitis has been treated mainly lies in the control of suprajengival plaque that's the reason we always stress on mechanical plaque control and even in the maintenance phase plaque control is being stressed upon so improving oral hygiene definitely decreases the incidence of periodontal disease we very well know that various long term follow up studies have shown that mainstream periodontal therapy success is always and always dependent only on maintaining low plaque levels though mechanical plaque control is a standard and many patients follow but many patients fail to follow it effectively <clears throat> all of us tell we brush for about 2 minutes though we brush for a good time of 2 minutes which is there only about half of the plaque is being removed though we use interdental aids as well few teeth receive little or no attention during brushing which is that that is the reason we need chemical plaque control in order to overcome the deficiencies of mechanical plaque control as mentioned above and one more important thing why we exactly require chemical plaque control agents apart from or overcoming the lapses which are there in your mechanical plaque control plaque formation if it is undisturbed and plaque reaches a quantitative and qualitative level of bacteria incompatible with bacterial health and will lead to gingivitis so prevention of suprajengival plaque control should have minimal compliance and skills which are there and there are various conditions in which patients may not be able to follow the mechanical plaque control as advised and chemical a plaque control agents definitely add as a boon in such patients who are there now as we saw previously the various classifications of chemical plaque control agents let us know about in them in detail first what are anti adhesive agents that is on the pellicle surface if the bacteria have to adhere these anti adhesive agents prevent the initial attachment of the primary plaque forming bacteria which are there but sometimes they have been toxic for oral use or ineffective against the dental bacteria which are there and hence we do not use it to a greater extent and one of which 
for example, would be your dalmophenol, which is there. The second group of agents, what we have been using, are something termed as antimicrobial agents, which inhibit bacterial proliferation, that is, they can be bacteriostatic, or they destroy all bacteria attaching or attached to the tooth, called as bacteriocidal. Bactericidal effect, if it has to be there, has to be persistent, else the biofilm will be quickly re-established once the antimicrobial agent washes away from the oral cavity. The third group of agents which we need to know is something called as plaque removable agents, which are otherwise termed as the chemical toothbrush, which are very similar to mechanical aids. That is, you are trying to remove the plaque once the plaque has formed, that is, you do brushing in order to remove the plaque which has already formed. So, similarly, these plaque removal agents act as a chemical toothbrush. And for example, the group of agents used were hypochlorides and enzymes which are there, which are directed at the pellicle. But because of certain side effects, they no longer are used to a greater extent. The next one would be something called as antipathogenic which inhibit the expression of pathogenicity without necessarily destroying the microbes that is very important because you need to have a chemical plaque control agent which is acting only against the pathogenic bacteria you do not want any chemical plaque control agent which destroys the normal commensals of the oral bacteria or the oral cavity which are there once we have known the various classifications of the chemical plaque control agents. Now let us know the vehicles for delivery of chemical plaque control agents. As all of us know and have been using every day, first and foremost would be definitely the toothpaste which is there. The toothpaste as you have been studying from first year and second year and further, you know the various compositions and this is a very important question uh, in the viva wherein examiners could be asking what are the contents of toothpaste which is the most active uh, ingredient since you have already studied about it i'll be just mentioning about it which are abrasives detergents thickeners sweeteners humectants flavoring and the active agents which are there the second group or the second way of delivery of chemical agents could be our mouth rinses which are aqueous solutions and acceptable in taste and now because of the risk of the cancers which are there most of the mouth rinses are alcohol free and to go by the definition mouthwash is a liquid which is held in the mouth passively and swirled around the mouth by contraction of the perioral muscles and or movement of the head and gargle the other ways are sprays irrigators chewing gum of course it has to be sugar free and there can be varnishes as well. I guess there's a small number mistake over here. Please pardon me for that. Apart from the various classifications we saw in the past or the previous slides which are there, antimicrobial or your chemical plaque control agents have been classified based on the contents of it as well. So now I'll tell you a very easy way to remember this table. It's not going to be very tough. First, please remember the alphabetical order A, B, C, and D, and E. Okay. So first, you have antibiotics, which comprise of penicillin, vancomycin, canamycin, nidamycin, and spiromycin. And mainly, they were having an antimicrobial action. And no longer any products have been used for a chemical plaque control agent in the oral cavity. The next A would be amine alcohols, wherein you have dalmophenol which previously you already seen that it acts mainly on plaque matrix inhibition which is there and uh, this is a controversial matter wherein it has been used or not used but because of the toxic side effects on the oral cavity cells uh, it was uh, used to a very lesser extent which is there next coming to b which is bisbiguanate wherein you have chlorhexidin and alexidin which is there and you know already the actions of it which is an antimicrobial and definitely the product is in use. Next would be our detergents, which are mainly our SLS would be sodium lauryl sulfate. And mainly it is found in toothpaste, as you very well know. It has got an antimicrobial and probably to an extent even plaque removal as well. 
and definitely the product usage is there. Next, you have the enzymes, which are mainly the protease, lipase, and nutase, nutanase, which are there and mainly acting on plaque control and no longer the products have been used. Next, coming to the fluorides, sodium fluoride and stannium fluoride. I hope somewhere this strikes fluoride where it has been used mainly to treat your caries and as an additive for chlorhexidine mouthwashes and as an anti caries toothpaste, which are there. And antimicrobial activity, as you know, is quite minimal. The product has been used as mentioned. And then you have the metal salts, which are there, which are mainly tin, zinc, and copper antimicrobial agents and have been used. Natural products, sanguinarin, it's an antimicrobial agent. It's no longer been used because of its carcinogenic effect, but still uh, you can find it in few of the herbal toothpastes which are there. And then you have the oxygenating agents which are mainly hydrogen peroxide, antimicrobial, and you do know where the treatment has been done. Then you have the phenols and essential oils, mainly thymol and triclosan. It mainly having an antimicrobial and an anti-inflammatory action in question mark because it is doubtful. And if you can recollect, uh, thymol is probably an important component of your Listerine mouthwashes which are there. And triclosan forms an important component in your Colgate toothpastes, all your Colgate sensitive and the Colgate toothpaste which are there. Mainly. Then you have your quaternary ammonium compounds, which are CPC and the benzalkanin chloride, citalperinum chloride, and benzalkanin chloride. Its again action is an antimicrobial. And the last one would be your salicinate, which is salifloor, which is having an antimicrobial and an anti inflammatory activity. The product is no longer being used. Let us see what exactly would be an ideal chemical plaque control agent. That is, if a agent has to be used on a long-term basis or for a short-term basis, what would the properties you would prefer if you have to prescribe it to a patient? First and foremost thing would be our substantivity. What do you mean by substantivity? It is the ability of an agent to bind to tissue surfaces and be released over time. Why is this important? That is because once you rinse off the oral cavity, there's a constant flow of saliva which is there. You have food, you drink water, you drink juices, you have tea and coffee. There are very high chances that the chemical plaque control agent which you're using will be rinsed off each time you eat or drink something which is there. So substantivity plays a very important role. And please remember this when we go into the next slides which are there. Penetrability is the ability to penetrate deeply into the biofilm. Selectivity is the ability to affect specific bacteria in a mixed population. Hereby, we are telling that we do not want any chemical plaque control agents to affect the normal oral commensals which are there. We just want them to affect the pathogenic bacteria which are there. Then you have stability, that is, the compounds have to be stable once you put it into the oral cavity. Extent of activity of the active agents which are there. Suppose you give chlorhexidine, you don't want it to degrade. Immediately it goes into the oral cavity. You want it to be active and that's the main purpose you're giving the chemical plaque control agent. That is extent of activity of the active agent in the presence of salivary or bacterial enzymes which could be there. And of course, solubility in the oral cavity. As soon as you rinse it, you don't want it to melt off or dissolve in the oral cavity as such. Uh, next one would be what is called as the bioavailability. What do you mean by bioavailability? That is, once you put it into the oral cavity, that particular agent should be available for action for a certain period of time. And then access to site of the action that is, when you rinse it, it should be able to use, uh, be in action, have action on the proximal surfaces as well and the ionic interaction, that is the agent and the receptor sites. Now, suppose you're giving chlorhexidine, you want it to prevent the addition of the bacteria onto the tooth surface. So that becomes the receptor site and the agent becomes your chlorhexidine. So you want the active agents to be present. So I'm again stressing over here, here the most important would be 
substantivity, which is the ability of the agent.